Our next guest is legendary stand-up comedian and a dentist, seriously. He's recovered from COVID double pneumonia and is now appearing in a huge show in New York. Please welcome Jeffrey Gorian. Jeffrey, it's so <laughs> nice to have you on. I, what a story you have, and we can't wait to dive right in. But let's start off, most importantly, you seem healthy and recovered, but Not good. COVID double pneumonia? Yeah, single wasn't good enough for me. I had to go in with both lungs, you know? Oh, wow. <laughs> I got it right away. Actually, I was sick in March. I got yeah. it I got it when it first came out, because I like to be the first at everything. <laughs> and you know, I'm joking about it, but it was really serious. I was I was sick for two weeks before I had to call an ambulance. I couldn't oh, take wow. the pain anymore. And I was I was afraid to go because this was at the time when New York was the epicenter of the virus. And they were warning emergency rooms, you know? And, and I had had a history of having a heart attack five years before, which turned out to be a good thing, interestingly enough. It was amazing. And who would ever think that having a heart attack would be a good thing? But I was, I was on blood thinners for the last five years. And when I got sick with COVID, nobody knew that it was causing blood clotting. In those days, that's how, unfortunately, that's how the Broadway star Nick Cordero lost his life due to oh. blood clotting, o oh, only wow. 41 years old. So I had been on blood thinners and on the third day of COVID, it went to my throat and I was hoping it was just a cold. But as a doctor, I always keep antibiotics in the house. So I started myself on z pack which was also a very lucky thing, not knowing that they were using z pack in the hospitals along with hydroxychloroquine. So mm -hmm. usually you stay on z pack for five days. I stayed on it for 10 days, but I still was getting sicker and sicker, but I was still able to breathe, not realizing it was the z pack that saved my breathing. Because wow. when I finally, when the ambulance took me to NYU Langone, which is such a great hospital, I can't say enough about them. They were so dedicated and, uh, on the first day, they were just concerned with bringing down my fever and raising my blood pressure. Because as you probably know, normal blood pressure is 120 over 80, and my 80 had dropped to 42. My circulatory system was collapsing. And they, they even found it hard to get a, a, a vein to start an IV. And so on the second day is when they put me on hydroxychloroquine. They started me on a double dose in the morning and a double dose at night. And by the next day, I started feeling different already. Wow. And, that, and that's when they moved me into a room with three other very sick men, all with the virus. <laughs> <laughs> but Jeffrey, you, you had some really special friends in comedy who kind of helped you keep your spirits up through all of this. Oh, man. Well, you know, I had been a regular on Sirius XM, and I'm so glad that you brought that up. Ron Bennington announced on Sirius XM that I was in the hospital. And I started getting literally hundreds and hundreds of messages from people, including major celebs like Bill Burr and Nick Kroll and John Mulaney and jo uh, Jim Norton and uh, Gad El Malet, called, the French Jerry Seinfeld, called me from <laughs> Paris. And, you know, I was too sick to answer anybody. I was just laying there. But I can't tell you how kindness is so important just to know that people are thinking about you you know, I, I'm a very big believer in the power of prayer and the power of thought. And when yeah. so many people are thinking about the same thing, I really believe that it has a lot of strength. And it gave me the strength to recover. They, they sent me home after four days because they needed the bed. They were out of rooms. They were putting people in the hallways already. Oh, I'm sure. And wow. I was, I was hoping they were kidding me when they told me that the man in the bed next to me was from Wuhan, China. Oh. <laughs> That can't even happen to a person, but it happened to me. Oh, boy. <laughs> and when I expressed my concern to the nurse, she told me not to worry, and she pointed to a thin curtain that was hanging between us. Meanwhile, she's wearing a hazmat suit with uh, swim fins and scuba gear, and I have a thin <laughs> curtain to protect me. I said, it's too bad Dr. Fauci didn't know about the thin curtain thing, because... <laughs> <laughs> The thin curtain business would have totally exploded, you know? <laughs> you know, oh. something else that we would have had to stockpile, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it took me a good two months to recover. That's how wow. long it took. It hit me mm. really hard. And if it wasn't for all those things happening, who knows what would have happened. 
But and I stayed in the house for months. I was afraid to go out because oh, yeah, that, you know, fear gets trapped inside your body. Yes. And after I recovered, it's one of the reasons I wrote another book, and it was called "Fight the Fear: Overcoming Obstacles That Stand in Your Way." And there was one chapter on my COVID experience, and one chapter on my heart attack, and one chapter on how I went to Japan all by myself because yeah. I. I, I believe that you have to confront your fears. Fear is a bully, and it doesn't want you to accomplish anything. And the whole world was engulfed in fear because of this virus. Yeah. So I, I hope you don't mind. I'm going to hold it up to show people. It came out as a number one release in four different categories, medicine and psychology, group therapy, cognitive behavioral therapy, and adult children of alcoholics. And I'm sure there are a lot of those that came out of the virus. But yeah. I felt it was important. I wanted to share my experience and how I had to fight fear in order to help me recover. Because wow. when, you're, when you're in a negative space, your immune system doesn't function as well. When you're living in fear and you're, and you're afraid of what's going to happen, when you're in a positive space, your immune system functions much better. And I knew I had to stay positive in order to survive because it was a crazy time. Nobody knew anything. No, it's been such a rough year for all of us. And I, I can't believe throughout all of this, you had the you had the opportunity to write and publish a book. I mean, kudos to you. Thank but you. obviously, we're all ready to laugh now, right? We're ready to go out there, have fun. Shows are coming back, obviously. We'll touch on that in a second with you. But overall, is live comedy back? Yes, it's back full time. Big time. It started with just 33%. And early in April, when it opened up, I went to about nine different clubs that first night because besides performing, I've been covering the comedy scene as a comedy journalist for about 20 years with Comedy Matters TV. And I wasn't ready to mix with the audience yet, but I wanted to get the feeling from the club owners on... On, on how they felt about comedy coming back after a year. People need to laugh. Laughter, you know, it's not just a cliche that laughter is the best medicine. We all need to laugh. And so I went to nine clubs. I interviewed all the club owners. Everybody was thrilled. But it was still 33%. People were separated in the clubs. Right. Now, it's, now it's back to 100%. And uh, I got asked, you know, as, as a, in celebration of my one-year recovery, I got asked to create a comedy show at the legendary cutting room. And it was so nice. So I put together an amazing lineup. It's going to be next week, uh, Wednesday, June the 23rd at 8 PM. I'm producing, but I'm also hosting. And that's me with the mic over there. <laughs> and I, I have a, I have a great lineup of comedians all from television and film. You know, Vladimir Kamanyo was one of the stars on last season's, CBS had a show called Tommy with Edie Falco, and he played a character called Abner Diaz. Derek Gaines was from The Last OG with Tracy Morgan. He was on all the time, and he was in the movie The King of Staten Island with Pete Davidson. Okay. Maceo is one of the, the originals from the Uptown Comedy Club with Tracy Morgan, and they all started out together. Dan Simonson is somebody that I just saw. He was on Colbert. He's from Norway, and he's hilarious. I couldn't believe I said, you have to be in this show. And Olga Neymer uh, opened for, for uh, Chelsea Handler and also opened for Gilbert Gottfried, one of my favorites. And Aaron Berg is, you know, you've heard of Opie and Anthony. So Anthony has his own uh, media company called Compound Media, and Aaron Berg has his own show called In Hot Water, and he's on the show as well. So wow. it's going to be... It's going to be an amazing lineup of talent. Yes, and, it looks like it. And I hope my friends from New Jersey will come out and join us. It's not that far away from New no. Jersey. <laughs> no, we definitely will cross, cross the bridge or the tunnel to get there. Thank For sure. Thank so, so much, Jeffrey. For more information on the show or to order tickets, just head on over to njonair.com and click on the link to this show. And we hope to see you out there. Jeffrey, thank you so much. We so appreciate your time today.
You guys are great. I didn't let you talk too much. But <laughs> I had okay, a lot you're play. our guest. And you're but our guest. It's, for, it's so for you to talk. <laughs> I'm so happy to be on with you. You guys put out great energy. And you know what? That's so important these days. People need positive energy. And you two just radiate positive energy. Oh, thank you. So, thank you. I'm a very big believer in that. And I'm so happy to be on with you. Thank you for having me as a guest. As am, as am I. Thank you so much, Jeffrey. You're very welcome. Have a great day. You too. Okay, thanks. Hey guys, thanks for watching Comedy Matters TV. To check out some of our other videos, click on the boxes on either side of me. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Not just for me, but for my parents.